And we welcome into the Hyundai Texans radio studio head coach, D'Amico Ryans. Coach, congratulations on the victory. Thank you. Thank Great you. Great to see you. We have a lot to get to today. I want to start here, though. An, an image I'll never forget from the game against mm-hmm. Pittsburgh. You on the sideline, basically by yourself with the headset, the long cord, and riling up the crowd, wanting the mm-hmm. crowd to get loud on third down, your defense on the field. Almost like there's a re-education process going on here because they do get loud, but you were reminding them at the same time. Yeah, for sure. And I was trying to tell our guys to make sure we right get the fans involved, get the fan, let them understand third down, we need them as loud as possible. That's how you truly create that home field advantage, man. We wanted our fans, I wanted our fans up and rowdy, making the communication difficult for the opposing offense. And it got loud at times. And I tell our guys, man, you continue to make plays, fly around like you're flying around, right? This place will be erupting. Coach, you've talked about the word swarm yeah. from the time you got here. I don't know how long it was into your press <laughs> conference. You mentioned the word swarm. Yesterday, it felt like that was the epitome of swarm. Is that the way you want your defense to play what you saw yesterday? Yeah, that mean, that's it. That's that's the start to it, yeah. right? We're getting there. That was the step. That was as close as we've been, right, as, as a defense, right, to swarming, right, to hold an opponent, a tough opponent in Pittsburgh to hold him to six points. Yep. Right? That doesn't happen often in this league. So credit to those guys and that and how they, right, didn't allow touchdowns, right? But when you talk about attacking the ball, uh, yep. Steven with his interception, we had a couple forced fumbles from Petrie, from Jimmy Ward, like, Guys flying around. You talk about eight, nine guys at the football. Like yep. that's what it looks like. Yep. And guys having fun. Yeah, like yeah. seeing the enthusiasm from the guys when they made plays. Like that's what it looks like. And we just keep building off of that. And that's why you can truly overwhelm your opponent. To have Jimmy and Petrie play together for the first time, what did that mean for the D? It, it was huge for the D. I mean, it, uh, seeing Jimmy and Petrie and their connection they had in training camp, right? It was. It was great having them back out there. Now they still have <laughs> some work to do yeah. as far as, you know, knocking off a little rust because it's been a while. First time that they've actually played in a game together, right? So, you know, if they continue to grow together in games and play off one another, it's going to be very, very important to our defense having both of those guys out there and also having Eric Murray step in for us as well and provide some quality reps, big time, third down stop. I mean, he's done a really nice job for us as well. I want to ask you about the first drive, but since we're talking about defense, I'll ask you about the second <laughs> drive of the game, Steven Nelson's interception. Yep. It was a play that looked very similar to what they had run the week before against the Raiders, and he talked about how he recognized it, saw it. And it's one thing to recognize it and see it, Coach. It's another one to go make a play on right. the ball the way that he was able to. How much did that juice up your defense getting that turnover at that time? Uh, that was the game-changing play, right? And we knew going into this game all week, we focused on, man, if we win the turnover battle, we win the game, yep. mm-hmm. right? And our offense, credit to them, they didn't give it, give it away at all. So zero for our offense, and we go out, we take one, we win the turnover battle, we win the game. But that's Nelson, man, every, every day in practice, right, he's going to jump around and make a play and pick the ball off. It's like, hey, man, how you know that was coming? <laughs> <laughs> Film study, coach, yeah, yeah. film study, coach. And that's always his answer, yeah. like film study. And as I try to teach our young guys, like watch the way Nelson practices, right. right? If he sees something, he jumps it, and he actually picks the ball off. He makes the play. Now he shows up in a game. He recognizes the formation, recognizes the route stem. He goes and makes a play. Like that's what being a, a pro is all about. Linebacker play, Henry and Christian lead the way in tackles, coach. And the fact that they were together at Alabama, is there sort of a DNA thing that occurs because <laughs> they are already brothers coming in here along with Will? Does the Bama factor apply at all? And can you just talk about their performance? I think for those two guys, you can see, you know, a true connection. They're truly like best friends yeah. when it comes to being off the field. So having that tandem out there together, I've actually seen a lot of growth in Christian Right, since Henry has been out there, like they work well with one another, right? And seeing both of the young guys grow with the linebacker position, right, it's, it's fun to watch. They're making plays all over the field, starting to get more consistent, and like, and it's gonna be it's gonna be a rocky road to climb, but they're headed in the right direction. Uh, Henry's doing a great job with communicating. Uh, Christian is doing a much better job of just flying around, playing physical. He had a couple physical tackles yesterday. That's what I've been asking him to bring to the 
defense more, just more physicality, and it's showing up. And so I'm excited about their improvement. Coach, I don't know if it was if you were asked specifically about Sheldon Rankins, but he was brought up in the press conference, yeah. and Mark and I actually talked about it this morning. The you know if you live with the numbers, maybe the numbers don't say TFLs and sacks and all that kind of stuff. But I felt like Sheldon was playing really well, so it was good to hear you talk about him and the way that he's playing. What have you seen from Sheldon, and what's he bringing to your defense? Yeah, what, what he brings is how the style of play I want to play with up front. And you talk about attacking, right, resetting the line of scrimmage. That's what Sheldon provides for us, right? You talk about execution when it comes to our stunts and games on third yep. down or passing situations, the way he executes it. Right, and not only just executes it, right, trying to get to the quarterback with everything he has, but if the ball is thrown downfield, to see his mindset to put a foot in the ground, turn, run, and go make two big third down yep. stops for us, like that's what I want. That's yep. what we're looking for yep. up front. Now we want to stop those guys before he makes the plays, but just in case, like his mindset is, man, if that guy's up, I'm going to make the play. Just that relentless mindset that I seen from Rankins and the leadership that he's provided to those guys up front has been uh, very beneficial for yeah. our defense. Coach, I know you're asked a lot about the offensive line, so I'm going to do it again, yeah. but in this way, <laughs> in this way, because I get the feeling that everything you've been through as a player and a coach, the next man up season in 2011 here as a player <laughs> to last year with the 49ers, seeing what you went through quarterback wise and all that, you don't care who's out there, just play ball, right? And CJ naming the O-lineman by name in his press conference it's this you're all in this together kind of feeling. Is that what right. you're trying to get across to the players? And that's it, man. We are we are all in this together. And I think, you know, we talk about the offensive line. I can't talk about those guys without first talking about, you know, Coach Strasser and Coach Cole and what they've done. Each week I feel like I'm going to Coach Strasser's office like, hey, we got an adjustment here to make. <laughs> uh, Coach Strasser every time. Oh. We'll make it work. Don't yeah, worry about yeah. it. We'll make it work. We'll make it. And how he's coached those guys up, right, shuffling positions, that's hard to do, right, a very important position, knowing, right, we have a young quarterback that they're protecting. Right, man, that's impressive. Impressive uh, coaching from those two guys and just having those guys prepared and ready to go. And then CJ understanding, right, how important his offensive linemen are to him, how important they are to the success of our team, our offense, like, it starts up front, and those guys understand no matter who gets in, it doesn't matter. Like, just mm -hmm. please just do your job and just finish with a relentless mindset. Whoever's in front of you, I don't care who they are. You can block whoever's in front of you. And just guys having that confidence, understanding you're not out there by yourself. We're going to do this with the help of all 11. Coach, I don't know what the offensive – definition of swarm would be <laughs> but I feel like it would be Damian Pierce running the ball because it there's there's no chill with him running the ball it is I'm going downhill and you could tackle me if you want I'll lower your IQ but I'm getting yards going downhill what did you see in the Damian Pierce yesterday that maybe we weren't seeing at the beginning of the year what did you see yesterday with him yeah, I saw Damian running with that mindset I would not be denied and you know, I've really, really, <laughs> I really uh, tried to strain our offense on Saturday night. Like, man, we have to run the ball, like, and continue to run it. But it's going to start, that swarming mentality, it starts with our receivers and how yeah. they block yep. on the edge. So we had a really cool play of Mechie, yep. Tank, and, I mean, Mechie, um, Rob, and Nico. All three receivers, they're on the edge and they're blocking, and Damian gets an explosive run. And I highlighted to the guys today in the team meeting that why this run works is because of the, the swarm from the receivers and how they're blocking, how the O-line is coming off the ball and staying with their guy, finishing their blocks. Like, that's that mentality. That's what allowed Damian to get going. I think it was just the mindset of everyone else around him, and it's that will not be denied mindset. I'm going to finish my block no matter what. With Nico, another record day for Nico, coach. And when you showed up as head coach and you looked at him, you evaluated Nico as a receiver, what did you see and what are you seeing now in the growth process? Because we saw flashes of this, but this is pretty consistent every week. All right. So when I showed up, I saw big, big guy, talent. I mean, had a lot of catches on the outside lane, right? And just seeing them, like, man, there's – 
there's so much more <laughs> to uh -huh. do with him. What I saw from OTAs is like, I don't know if he dropped the ball. Like, so you, it immediately stuck out that he has probably the best hands on the team, right? That stuck out to me. So it's just how can we continue to put him in position, different positions, right, different routes to make plays and utilize his size, his catch radius, his great aggressive hands. How can we put him in position to make plays? And that's what you've seen that connection grow between him and CJ. CJ is trusting him. He's putting the ball up to him. And CJ, I mean, and Nico, it's showing him that you can trust me no matter where you put the ball. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's one great catch he makes on RPO. It's a low ball. He yeah. goes down and snags it. It's just that connection has been fun to watch. It feels like you put the no block, no rock sort of <laughs> thing on the receivers. <laughs> like, you're not block, you're not yeah. going to get the rock. <laughs> um, Coach, I don't know the, how, how far we've gotten into this interview without mentioning uh, your quarterback and what he's – what he's done offensively and look, I know he's a rookie and, and obviously there's a long career ahead of him and all that kind of stuff. He's going to do a lot of great things, but what has he done for your offense at this point right now? Um, because it feel, it felt like yesterday you could run it when you wanted to, you could throw it when you wanted to. He felt calm behind an offensive line that was, was banged up. What is your quarterback bringing to your offense and to your team right now? Really, when I see CJ and the offense and where they progress to, I, I think CJ is just, he's provided confidence to this offense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, you know, showing it multiple times when we, you know, weren't protecting as well to start and not showing when we had protection and the plays he made, guys were like, oh, okay, man, if we do protect, like give him time, he can, yeah. he can drop dimes all over yeah. the field, right? And so, He's provided that confidence that, hey, as your quarterback, I can go and make a play for you guys. I can deliver the football wherever we need it put on the football field. And they're starting to trust in him, starting to trust in each other, right? And they're all playing together in a confident way. And that's how you go and play as well as they played on Sunday. I guess that's got to affect play calling for Coach Slow, as they call him, <laughs> yeah. as well, because late in the first half, there you are. You don't have a lot of time, but, hey, let's go get at least three right here, and you did that. Right, yeah. End of the half, we want to finish with the ball. If we can, finish with points. And the way they executed the uh, two-minute drive there, about 40 seconds left, just the execution, everybody understanding the situation, understanding how quickly we needed to move down the field, understanding the clock situation. Uh, it was beautiful to watch. Just everybody operate. Jared Patterson, his, I mean, how fast he's running down to get mm -hmm. the ball, to execute, to get the spike. It's just it's beautiful to watch. When everybody's executing, doing their job, right, you can – you can move the ball. You can score points in this league. That's two weeks in a row. Last play of the half, Kaimi knocking home a field goal at the last play, which is pretty nice. Coach, some of the players we've heard talk about kind of the message this week. Everybody knew the date of the last time you had won at home. We knew it. I mean, we yeah. knew the number of days. I mean, <laughs> summer 26, 2021. Like, if you said that date to us, oh, yeah, that's the last time we won at home. Why was that such an important message to relay to the players? And how did you see them kind of take that message in this week? Right, it's uh, I popped that date up. I popped the big slide up in our team meeting on Saturday night, and I put that date up there. And it's important to me to let our guys know, like, man, it's it's time to change how our fans feel when they walk out of our stadium, right? Mm -hmm. And we yep. want our fans right to walk out of our stadium excited, as for the first time since. 12, 26, 21, <laughs> that our fans are able to walk out with the smiles on their face, excited about the team, their team, right, proud of their team. And that's why it meant a lot to me to make sure our players knew that this is bigger than the Steelers, yep. right? It's bigger than anything that we have going on. But we can change the, the hope of our city, the hope of our fans, just by going out providing a win because they haven't felt this in a really long time. So let's go and change that narrative. So J.J. goes into the ring of honor. He said before the game that he spoke with the team and said some things to the effect of, hey, if you put the work in, that's the most important thing. You can enjoy being a professional football player, and it's enjoyable, but it's only enjoyable when you do put the work in and get the yeah. results of that work. How is that message? How did you see it? Perfect message, perfect timing, right? Mm -hmm. JJ spoke to our team on Friday. I asked him to just say a few words about just how he prepared, you know, how he played and what does it mean to him. And, I mean, he gave an on-time message to our guys. It's just focus on the moment. Like, take a chance to just soak it all in and understand, 
right, what you have in front of you. You get the opportunity, right, to play in the NFL. Like, don't waste one moment, right? Mm-hmm. Own every moment that you have. And that was a perfect message from JJ. And they could see, like, he said, like, everything else will take care of itself, right? If you handle your business on the field and do that the right way, all the things you're looking for off the field, whatever comes with it, it'll come. But just focus on the ball, focus on the process. And I'm really very thankful for JJ coming in and giving that message. It's, it's awesome when you have a guy who come in and he's going into the ring of honor and he kind of reiterates the message about working and the work that you put in. Like I was thankful. I didn't, I didn't pay him for that message, but he, <laughs> he came in and gave, gave the exact message that I would give to the guys, different voice. So I, man, thank you, JJ. <laughs> hey, Coach, I'm always enamored with – not only you, but just coaches when they speak to your team, especially in, in the post game. Yesterday, it felt like listening to you in the post game. There's a different vibe in your voice. It was, it was um, I don't even know how to describe it, but how much did you think about what you were going to say to the team after the game? Or was that just natural? It was just coming out. It was just emotion <laughs> from the win. Oh, well, it's, uh, I really just hit on some things that I asked our team to do on Saturday night, right? We talked about we wanted to run the ball more than 30 times. The things that it took to – I just went back and watched, looked at the stats with the Pittsburgh Steelers and when they lost game, like winning the turnover battle, running the ball more than 30 times, right, creating explosives in the running game. And, man, when I got to my – after the game and I'm asking, all right, asking Jake, like, what do we do? And he's like, how many runs? I said, my first question was, how many runs did we have? Yeah. Mm. Right? And he's telling me, and it's like, okay, 30, boom, 38 runs. Hey, he gave me, gave me all the numbers. I'm like, this is awesome. And yeah. then I just went from the heart. And that's kind of how I speak to the team yeah. after a victory or it's just coming from the heart. And that one, it did feel special because our guy, they did exactly what I asked them yeah. to do on Saturday night. So that's where that, I think that difference, yeah, yeah, it came from just because I was so proud of what they did. And man, the, the energy in our stadium, right? So many things went in that. Like getting the win since the first win since 2021 and running the ball, how we ran the ball, swarming on defense, just everything just coming together, how it came together, right? With JJ's ring of honor thing. Like, man, it was just a special moment, yep. special win all the way around. Yep. And now you go to Atlanta. Oh, boy. And they've got some assets. There's no question about <laughs> it. Some good moments on D. They have B. John Robinson. They're a whole new challenge for you on the road in a relatively brand new building. It's not that brand new, but the Texans have never yeah. been there as an organization before. So what about the thoughts on the Falcons, Coach? Uh, Falcons, tough, tough opponent. We uh, had opportunity to play them uh, last year. And, you know, Arthur, he does a really good job on offense mm-hmm. of playing what I call positionless football. Like you have – Cordero Patterson, B. John Wright, you have all these running backs. Uh, Kyle Pitts, is he a tight end? Is he a wide receiver? Mm. Multiple guys who can play multiple different positions that stress you when it comes to personnel challenges, who's on the field, the type of plays that they're running. So it's going to be a very, very tough matchup offense. I mean, for us, defensively versus their offense. And, you know, they have a new defensive coordinator this year. And they've been playing very well. Uh, really good guys up front. Grady Jarrett, Calais Campbell, tough. Mm. Another tough opponent on the defensive line. It doesn't change. Go from <laughs> Wad and Highsmith to Calais and Grady. It doesn't change a lot. So another big, big matchup for us. And you know, I'm I'm excited to take our show on the road. Coach, I don't want you to give anything away at all. But when you're playing players like you just mentioned. Guys that, well, he's part tight end. I got like Travis Kelsey. Are there situations where you treat him as one position? Are there situations, well, we might treat him as this position. Is that something that you guys work out? How's the preparation for a, for a group like this that might be a little different from some other where you, this guy's a Y, this guy's an H, this guy's, well, they're always in this. How do you kind of go about it when you have positionless offensive players like that. Does it vary situation to situation how you treat things? Yeah, it varies, especially when you talk about third down. Like a third yeah. down, hey, we may play this guy as a receiver, whereas opposed to first and second down, hey, let's play him just how they line up. Yeah. If he lines up in line, we'll treat him as a tight end. If he lines up outside, we'll treat him as a wide receiver. So there's multiple ways of how you can do it. And then that all comes down to what can you handle as right, a right defense and how the guys can adjust quickly. So it'll come down to a lot of – uh, communication 
from the safety and linebacker uh, spot for us. So it's definitely always tough when you have multiple guys who can do a lot of different things. All right, Coach, the Ask Coach Question of the Week presented by Amogee Bank. A Nick Casario wants to – no, I'm just kidding. He didn't ask this. <laughs> Nick, what are you but, doing? <laughs> no, but let's, let's talk about something important, barbecue. You grew up in Alabama, uh, okay. right? So they have a certain kind of barbecue in Alabama. <laughs> but you got here in 06. Have you fully converted to Texas barbecue, or is it still about what's available back home? No, I'm all in on Texas barbecue okay. right now. I know. <laughs> it can't be We're denied just happy there. you eat barbecue, <laughs> as opposed to the guy who asked the question. Yeah, yeah. Mark doesn't eat barbecue? No, no Mark no. does. Oh, Nick, okay. Nick right. is, uh, Nick's not Don't a worry. big we'll, fan. Oh, okay. We'll address this with Nick. Right. I'll make it good with the general manager. <laughs> <laughs> no, of course. Houston has great barbecue. Love it. Anytime I can get good barbecue, I'm all for it. Barbecue or Tex-Mex? So barbecue. It could be either one. Man. Barbecue. Barbecue for sure. Okay. All right. <laughs> Is that your cheat meal? No, always. <laughs> <laughs> it's not cheating. It's good. It's, it's healthy. Good. It's good for you. Good for the soul. Yeah. <laughs> Coach, thanks a lot. Good luck this week. Thank you, guys.